Welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is my Sears School Survival Kit. Stand by. Hey, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Thanks. All right, now before we begin, I've got some good news and I've got some not so good news. Now the good news, yours truly made the list of promotion for major this past January. That's right, moving on down the line to the Commander General Staff College for a year of training out in the Midwest. Now the not so good news is this, next couple of weeks, videos are gonna be somewhat condensed and a little bit shorter than normal, but I'm still gonna to try to get the best information to you for your own survival skill set, and so you can still come by, enjoy my videos, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and have a good time at Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. Now let's get to the video. Back. So today we have a Sears Survival Kit. Now the methodology behind the kit is to teach students how to survive in the wild with the bare bones items, some of the more Contemporary items like lighters and matches are removed from the kit. That way students learn how to use things like ferro rod, a magnesium bar to start fire. And then once those items are taken away, the student learns how to use natural materials from the landscape to affect survival. So, so now what we're gonna do is break down the kit by survival priority. The priorities being fire, water, food, shelter, first aid, navigation, and then signaling. And we'll break down into those seven priorities of survival talk about the items that are in the kit, and then look at some improvisational ways to achieve the same effect, either using the items in the kit or the materials from the landscape. Now for our survival priority of fire, cotton balls and Vaseline were man-made tinder that we were allowed, magnesium bar, and then a small ferro rod were all part of the packing list to include 550 cord. I include the 550 cord as part of the fire kit because we can use this to make a bow drill and affect friction fire to get fire, which is why it's part of the fire kit. And then one thing I've added is my handy dandy Ranger lighter, just a lighter with 100 mile an hour tape with chapstick, and then an emergency cotton ball with impregnated Vaseline underneath the cap, not only to keep our warrior lips supple, but to also add a way to extend flame with the tape and then emergency tinder with the cotton ball underneath the cap of the chapstick. The ferro rod, giving it a duct tape sheath at 100 mile an hour tape to protect it from erosion out in the wild. But these are the main items to affect fire as part of the kit. All right, so here's our shelter kit. These are the main components. We still had other items available to us and we could even use the landscape around us to make debris shelters or make an improvised shelter if we're without these items. First two items, gloves and a boonie, obviously for protection again with your hands and then on top of your head. Also offers a level of concealment and camouflage, but these fall within shelter, given if you were without these items, you still had these to help protect yourself from the elements. Next, just a grabber space blanket with that mylar side on the inside. Use this as a reflector or a ground blanket. Use it for a variety of purposes, even a signal. We can use this as a signal to signal friendly forces, but a grabber space blanket is part of that kit. Next we have our whoopee or our poncho liner underneath the gear on top for a blanket, goes without saying, the best piece of military gear ever invented, the whoopee or poncho liner. Next, bungee cords. Bungee cords to string up our shelter, but then also for improvisation. We can take the elastic out of these and make a slingshot. 550 cord again, 550 cord is ubiquitous in the military. We can use this to create a ridge line. I used it to create a ridge line during the course to string up my shelter fast and easy. Next, an e-tool is part of that. E-tools, I would rather dig with an e-tool than a stick, but we can use the e-tool to dig our Dakota fire hole. We can use it to dig a slit trench, dig a cat hole. We can even use it as an improvised weapon, but this e-tool was part of the shelter kit. And then we have our poncho, not only as a rain jacket, but for our A-frame shelter or a plowshare or just our hooch that we're gonna set up for the night shelter. And then lastly, our map. Now this map is made of Tyvek which is the material they wrap 
houses in during construction, waterproof material. We can even use this, and I did use this as a rain jacket to put over myself to keep off the rain at night when we were out all these items and all we had left was what was on us to include our map. But these are the items for our shelter kit. Now water is one of the biggest priorities of survival. We can only survive three days or so without water. We can only go about 21 days without food, but water is going to be one of the biggest priorities for survival. One of the mainstays of the kit is going to be that canteen, canteen cup, the cover or case to hold it all together, and then even a cravat, and I also include iodine tablets. We used iodine tablets primarily for the way to treat water on the move during all our movements, but we can use that cravat as well to make a filter with sediment, with charcoal and grass, and then moss to initially filter our water into a canteen cup and then actually boil that water with our canteen cup. With this kit as well, we can cook our food in the canteen cup, and then we can even make medicines in the canteen cup. We can use the cravat as an initial filter as well over top of our canteen cup, or even over top of our one quart canteen to pour dirty water into and initially filter that water with, from the sediment and from the turbidity, and then travel with that water to a safe place to boil it, to make it safe to drink. So the canteen, canteen cup, the cover, the cravat and iodine tablets are the primary mainstay for the water kit for our survival priority of water. Now for food, we did have some food during the course. MRE kind of represents that portion. MRE is good to travel with in the course, lasts a long time. Good to go to the field with just like backpackers meals, beef jerky, dried foods that last a long time we can take into the field that are lightweight. We can pack these plus the items in here we can use for improvisational purposes. We had tin foil as part of the kit. Tin foil folds up nice and neat. We can use this to boil or cook in. We can also use it for fishing lures and tear off small pieces if need be. And then this even functions as a signal given its shiny surface. So that's in there. But my sewing kit is the main kit used for repair and then food gathering. You see, I have small 24 gauge wire here for snares, even have fishing line, safety pins for improvised fishing hooks. And then on the back side here in this tape, I have fishing hooks taped up along with razor blades to process game or for improvisational purposes. But this was my main hunting and food gathering kit and it's very small, fits up in a tight little space that can be put in a pocket or into a kit where we have all these items and everything else we just gather from the landscape and make on our way as we survive. Now for our priority of signaling as the airplanes are rolling over, forgive the sound, we have VS-17 panels, flashlights, signaling mirrors, even the signaling mirror or the mirror inside our camo compact can be used as a signaling mirror, and then flares. The VS-17 panel and the flare were issued as part of training. The remainder of the items we, were ha we had as part of our packing list. So the VS-17 panel I have is about two feet by eight inches, orange on one side, olive drab on the other, so we can quickly conceal this, fold it up, and avoid detection if necessary. Flashlights. We can use flashlights during hours of limited visibility to signal rescuers. You can even use the strobe function on the headlamp as a passive signal, as well as using even IR strobes for signaling purposes at nighttime. And then a special function of the L-shaped flashlight is that we can use this flashlight with fine steel wool and lead wires held in the bottom compartment, attach the internal workings of the flashlight, turn it on, touch the fine steel wool, and we can use this as a fire starter as well. And then finally, signaling mirrors and the flare. Now the signaling mirror, we've been using signaling mirrors in the military for hundreds of years now, and they signal over distance during daylight hours. We can use these to signal, and there are stories of people being rescued via signaling mirror from over 100 miles away. We can use that signaling mirror and then even the one inside our camo compact to signal rescuers as part of our signaling plan. And then finally flares. Flares, we can just pop off, twist, pull, and fire in front of a rescuing aircraft to alert them to our location. And in emergencies, it can be used to start a fire. But these are the items for our signaling kit. Navigation is one of our priorities of survival. Now with our kit here, we have a notebook, map markers, a protractor, the actual map itself, and then a lensetic compass. Now with our notebook and map markers, we obviously don't want to take down sensitive information in our notebook, but we can still use the notebook with a pen to draw out a sun compass or a solar compass if we lose ours. 
Now a technique we can use with our map markers is writing notes or messages or coordinates, whatever it is, on a leaf. Using that leaf with our map marker, we can write down our coordinates for a map or some sort of message that we receive, understand that, memorize that information, and then destroy it quickly so nobody can read it and nobody knows what that message was except for us. Another thing we can do with our protractor is take some gutted 550 and tie it to the center. There's usually a little hole or we can make a hole in the center and use that to get an accurate azimuth from anywhere around our protractor hastily. And then one of our last items is our lensatic compass. We can use this to get an accurate bearing even at nighttime using the bezel ring around the compass. All right, opportunity training everybody. This is the Onzetic Compass, military style. Now the black circle on the outside is the bezel ring. It rotates freely, clockwise and counterclockwise. You'll see the horizontal illumination bar moved as I rotated it. When it is on line with this black line in the center of our compass, that is zero degrees. Say we need it to go 30 degrees and we don't have a way to see our compass at nighttime other than the illumination bars. Each click of the bezel ring is three degrees. 30 divided by three is 10. That means we need to go 10 clicks because our azimuth 30 degrees is less than 180 degrees. We're going to rotate counterclockwise. If it was over 180 degrees, we would rotate clockwise. So now we just rotate the bezel ring and count our clicks 10 counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now all we have to do is rotate this compass until our north seeking arrow is in line with our horizontal illumination bar and whatever number falls on this black line will give us our azimuth which will be 30 degrees rotating rotating we're in the doghouse illumination bars are matched up and you'll notice that the black line is directly on top of the 30 degrees you'll see the 20 and the 40 left and right hand side that dark line that is a little bit longer in the middle where the black line is bisecting, that is 30 degrees. That is how you find your azimuth at nighttime when you can't visibly check your compass with a light. You can use the illumination bars and the clicks of the bezel ring to orient yourself and get a proper azimuth during nighttime land navigation. So we are not without the ability to find a direction or an azimuth at nighttime. And this is our navigation kit. Now another priority was medical aid. Medical aid is very important. We have a few items here that were part of the course that we can use for medical aid. Now the first set we were allowed a bag or a small box of band-aids. It's just my mini medical tin there. We weren't allowed any of these items except the band-aids that were inside. We're always foraging for food, gathering materials, using tools or making tools. And so we're going to get cuts and small lacerations and abrasions to our hands. So having waterproof band-aids were very important and very useful. We can also use 100 mile an hour tape to make band-aids. You've already seen it on my lighter, even on this lighter as part of my medical tin. But 100 mile an hour tape, what can't you do with duct tape? Olive drab to conceal, and then we can use this for flame extenders, we can use it for band-aids, like I said, we can use it for construction and repair and improvisation. So having a small roll of 100 mile an hour tape or duct tape is important. And then lastly, some of the things we had were cravats, military cravats. We can use these not only as camouflage around our head, we can use these to cool ourselves, wrap in a wet one around our neck, use this for gathering materials as a water filter as well. We can string a couple of these up, fill it with material just like we would make an improvised filter with, and then filter water with it. We can also use the cravat for medical aid. We can take one cravat and a large stick and use it to create a tourniquet. Once you have that tourniquet effect, we can take the other cravat and secure that tourniquet in place so we don't have any more blood loss or lose the effect of that tourniquet. But cravats are very handy, multi-use items to have as part of this kit. So these are the items for our medical kit. Now out in the wild, we need to understand plants and get a good knowledge of plants. Even a basic cursory knowledge of plants and trees out in the wild can save our lives and provide medical aid to us if we are injured. Now, one of the things we can do is find a Douglas fir like this tree in a mountainous region like the one I'm in, and it has little nodules that grow on the exterior of the bark. We can pierce that nodule with our finger, with a stick, with our knife, and use the sap resin 
from that nodule and apply it topically to an injury on our skin to help prevent infection. The sap and resin from the tree has antimicrobial properties on it and then it will seal up that injury and help prevent against infection. Another medical improvisational technique is to find yarrow. Yarrow grows in shady areas with a lot of moisture, still with some exposure to sunlight, but yarrow has been used for thousands of years to treat wounds. Romans used it to treat their wounded soldiers from combat. We can take this because it has an absorbent quality. We can take this, apply it to a wound, and then take our cravat as an improvisational bandage and place that over a wound to absorb the blood and help stop bleeding from a wound if we are without a robust medical kit. Now our kit's not complete without cutting tools or knives. So here we have our cutting tools and our knives. First thing is the multi-tool. This is on the packing list. Highly recommend a good multi-tool. I'm a huge fan of Leatherman as opposed to other multi-tools out there. But with a serrated knife, a saw blade, which I think is incredibly important on a multi-tool, the pliers themselves gives us another set of hands and a way to manipulate man-made objects that we find out in the wild. A straight blade for processing game or cutting, and then even a awl or reamer for a drilling device. We can use this multi-tool for a variety of functions. That's why it's a Super Tool 300. It gives us a variety of functions and tools available in this small, little multi-tool. But a Leatherman Super Tool 300 or a variant like the Serger Wave is what I recommend. Next, a folding knife. This is just a small folding Benchmade Griptilian. We can open one hand, close one hand as well. This is the utilitarian knife for everyday uses from cutting cordage, tape, processing game, making firewood. We can even take this and I've shaved off the back of the spine of the knife to a 90 degree to use it with our ferro rod to strike sparks. Makes it easy as another way to start fire, but a small folding knife, good for everyday uses and the number one go-to for all camp projects. And then finally, a fixed blade knife. The Mora was recommended as part of the packing list, so brought the Mora Companion HD, military green, rubberized handle, Scandi grind, carbon steel. We can strike a rock off the back of it if we need to. And then the Scandi grind makes carving easy with a rubberized handle, even with poor dexterity, being cold or wet out, gives us a good grip to process game or process materials. And then even the sheath, wrapping 550 cord around it, we can turn it into a mini survival kit. So that is gonna be our fixed blade. So these are the items or tools for our survival kit, cutting tools, as well as tools for improvisation and everyday use. guys well i hope you liked that video if you did like that video hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave me a comment in the comment section i always appreciate your feedback i want to thank you guys for everything you do for me for the channel for your likes your views your subscriptions your comments your feedback and your shares and i'm back with another video as soon as i can guys thanks mm -hmm.